like it's crazy how this shit go. Like, like I know they gonna hate me for being real, but I know they gonna love me for making it through. So what's up, y'all? It's Perspective, Volume Four, and we got me, Lika, Mahogany, Queen. Was you growing up? So basically, I grew up in Inglewood. I grew up in South Central, a um, little bit of Hawthorne. Living in those three cities, um, it was a little rough. I'm not going to lie. It was a little rough, but I feel like it molded me to be um, the person that I am today. So growing up, how did sports help you with life? Um, sports helped me in life. A lot like everything I do I correlated back to you know sports that I played in high school which was basketball volleyball uh, a little bit of softball and what I learned is everything you do you have to involve a team it's not just I it's not just you like you can't win a championship by yourself so when I go through different aspects of life I know that I can't do it by myself. I probably could. I probably could try. But I'm going to get a lot further, you know, doing it with the team. So um, I definitely correlate sports a lot in my professional and personal life. So You say you start to understand responsibility. Like, when was responsibility something that you was like, oh, man, this is real. Like, I really got to take care of this or I really got to make sure I'm on time. Like, when do you feel like you came into your responsibility role as a person? Mm, honestly, I feel like it came later in life. It came later in life for me because growing up, um, I grew up in a two-parent household, and I felt like things were given to me. And I didn't realize how much that kind of held me back, in a sense, until I got older because... You know, certain things that average, you know, adults were doing, I wasn't doing, like, you know, laundry. I didn't have to do my own laundry when I was growing up. So when I got older, it was kind of a struggle. I had to, like, figure it out. Like, I was just literally taking all the clothes and putting it into one. Like, like what? I had to spread them out. I had to, like, do the colors and the jeans and the shirts, you know? So... <laughs> <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so like little stuff like that, like it did, um, I won't say it handicapped me, but I had to learn how to do those things later on as an adult. Also too, like playing sports all the way up until college, um, you know, living in the dorms, the only responsibility you have was make sure you get back to your dorms by curfew, make sure you go to the cafeteria and make sure you eat you know, stuff like that. So it, I feel like it was like minor responsibilities. And so after college, then um, I felt like then like responsibilities slowly start to, you know, kick in, having your own apartment, making sure then bills is paid. Like it started to kick in a little bit later in life for me as an adult. But Honestly, I'm still I'm still learning some things. I'm still learning some things. So we all are, man. But that's love, though. We keep it real. We keep it real. What was your first job? So my first job was my first job was the Santa Monica Pier. And for those that don't know, it's like um, it's like a pier on the beach. Like it's literally like a small little carnival on the pier by the beach. Um, and so my responsibility was controlling one of the games, you know, making sure, you know, the money was balanced and stuff like that. So I felt like when I had that job, I, you know, I kind of started learning a little more responsibilities and how to manage money. And, um, yeah, that was my first job. Me and a couple of my other friends, we applied, we got hired together we went to work together, so it was fun. It was fun. I definitely remember those those times. And how old do you think you were? Um, ooh, maybe I 
I think I was still in high school, so maybe like 16, 17. I think it was my senior year. So, so yeah. What was your first impression when we first met? So, so when we first met, we had a lot of mutual friends in common. And we kept just like bumping into each other. So, I think you might have hit me up on MySpace. And, um, yeah, we just started talking from there. And um, I was like, okay. I liked how you carried yourself. Uh, you was real quiet. Like, you wasn't doing the most. And and you could dress. Like, I think that's what caught my eye was because you was like this tall guy. And he knew how to dress. He, that you, usually you don't get both, you know. You might get. You know, you might get one or the other. So I was like, check. Okay, check. He got some fly ass shoes. Check. He know how to put that on. Check. So it was just a whole bunch of checks for me. And I was like, okay, we keep bumping into each other. So, and um, yeah, it was cool. It was cool. It was cool how it worked out. Because look at us. So when we first made it official and really started dating, well, well, first, okay, before you even get into your question, there, I think there's a sub question you need to ask first because let the people know we was best friends. And, you know, that term was thrown out very loosely in high school. Like, everybody had a best friend, like five, six, seven, eight best friends, right? But I felt like we had like a real connection best friend like we was dating other people and um it was just a cool like it was a cool friendship and I felt like it just like morphed into something else and then we started to take it a little bit serious but we was definitely best friends first we knew each other's uh secrets and yeah we had a dope friendship. Like, we had a lot of things in common, played basketball, had a lot of mutual friends. We both had cars. And then I found out you had a spot, and it was over because I was pulling up. If not every day, every other day. No call. That's the type of friendship. Yep, I'm pulling up. Scary, scary. And it was just, it was just a fun relationship, like, he was always, you know, making me laugh, and I feel like I was making you laugh as well, and, you know, pulling up to the spot, checking out the big screen TV, you know, going through your refrigerator, seeing what snacks you had. It's a bond. I mean, at the end of the day, we built up a real foundation. Yeah. So what was your thoughts? I was fresh out, you know, I got happy. I only been out probably what? Oh, when you got out? Okay, okay. Fresh out of prison. When you got out, I was like, oh. First of all, you was missing for a hot minute. And I'm like, I ain't seen him in a minute. And then I, like a couple days later, I found out that you was fresh out. You was locked up for a little time and you got out. And so when you got out, of course, we excited, you know, that energy was definitely missed. Um, And then you pulled up to a function and uh, it was like, oh, okay. You know, had the muscles busting out. (laughs) Definitely in there getting swole, hitting them burpees every single day. And it showed, it literally showed y'all. His muscles, <laughs> his muscles was popping out of the plaid. Like, what'd you have? You had, like, a little plaid button-up. Yeah, I was, like, 220. I got all the way up to 220. That was every day I do 1,200 push-ups. Like you said, burpees. It was, I was programming. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but he definitely got out looking like he didn't miss no burpees in there. So when he got out, you know, we joked about it. And, and when he got out, what I, what I admired most was it was almost like the same person that went into jail 
got out of jail. And then I know how that like sounds kind of crazy because that is literally what happened. But sometimes people are locked up for so long and when they get out, it's almost like a shell shock. They don't know what to do. You know what I mean? So when you got out, it was almost like you kept that, that, that mentality of, you know, I still got to go out here and get it. I still want to look good. Even though you was busting out the shirts, you still was, I could tell your wardrobe, you was looking for it. You was looking for the wardrobe. I couldn't fit nothing no more. It looked like something happened, but you was still, I give you the E for effort because you were still trying to put it on. Yeah, I was 220, all my, all my old, anything I had, it was, it was, I was starting all over, but it was love, though. We made it work. But yeah, for sure. Yeah. So you got out, you, you directly, immediately got on your grind, you know, you had an apartment. And I was like, yeah, what, is your, what was your thoughts about that? Because you pulled up, I was no, I was probably out, what, a week? And you pulled up and you like, I'm like, pull up. And you're like, pull up where? Yeah, so I, I pulled up. I'm walking in the spot. And I'm like, it ain't much in there. But it's the thought that, you know, he got an apartment fresh out. Like, who does that? And, um. Yeah, so we pulled up. You know, he had a TV on this little bin. You know, he was what I liked and admired the most. Again, was he was still trying. Like he didn't complain about his situation. He had the TV. I think you might have had the PS hooked up too. Like you was trying to get your little situation going. He was trying to set the vibes, and that's dope. Like, you know, so. I love that. Let me, let me give you your flowers, cause <laughs> when I got out, you was definitely on your, you was on your grid, you was on your grind. And what I loved about the situation is that even you knew I was at my lowest, I could tell you saw the potential. Yeah, and, I was. Yeah. And uh, one thing I thought that was, you know, you kept a G is that it was like uh, I would drop you off to work. You was on our baby boy. You was on our baby boy. I, what I was saying is the saying is, <laughs> yeah, it was definitely like that. And, uh, and I thought that was, uh, I'll never forget that because I thought that was a real player. I thought that was cool that you were like, you know, you just, you, you was banking on potential and that was the best because you kind of already knew how it was before I went in. But yeah. I think, you know, me being at my lowest and then seeing you there and just like, you know what, I want to, I want to be a part of this journey. Um, opening the store was stressful, exciting, a lot of anxiety. Um, but it was definitely a journey that I wanted to see where it took us. Um, it was just cool. It was, it, I feel like opening the store at the time that we did, it was an exciting time because I felt like retail and like streetwear, that whole fashion era was kind of like taking off. Like we already knew the potential it had because we seen it in the Beverly Center. We were selling out. And so the fact that we were about to, you know, open up our own flagship store, we just, we knew that we had a great product. We knew that being in a storefront was going to help the brand um, but later on, like finding out that like maybe Inglewood actually wasn't the area for, you know, the product that we were selling, I felt like that was the only thing that, um, was kind of like the, the downside to open up the flagship store, but it was a fun time. Like I, I remember opening, I remember my mom, she opened a business And it kind of brought back those same, like, memories, like going in the morning to open up the shop, making sure it's right, sweeping, getting it right for the customers, making sure we have money in the cash register. 
So I had a little bit of that experience and I enjoyed it. Like me and my mom, we, you know, we were both at the office and just hanging out, just waiting for people to pull up and shop with us. So I definitely love that part. Um, and opening the store in Inglewood just brought so many, so many different walks of life in the store. And every day, like, we never knew who was going to walk in our store. We never knew, like, what, you know, new connection we were going to meet. So that part of it was definitely fun and exciting. And, um, yeah, I enjoyed it. I do want to mention, do you remember when Urban Trademark, you remember we were sitting in the living room and we was like, I remember you was like, I want to make a brand. Like, I want to come up with a brand. And I was like, all right, like, let's start with the name. Like, what should we name it? And I remember we were brainstorming in the living room. We had a, a blank piece of paper, and we was just writing down random words. And I'm like, okay, well, how do you feel? Like, what are you feeling? Like, and then I'm Googling stuff. And, like, that was the fun part, like, creating like we we were creating something from nothing and like that first step of creating a name was um I don't th- I probably never forget that like I think you might have came up with one word and then I came up with the other word I think you came up with urban cuz you like this is like streetwear this is fresh this is new and I was like trademark and you was like and and what you do you got to say it. You got to say it multiple times. Like, you got to hear yourself saying it. So you was like, Urban Trademark? Urban Trademark. Urban Trademark. And I was like, that's it. Like, what do you what do you keep saying it for? That's it. Urban Trademark. And at that time, like, urban, people wasn't really using urban. Like, if you heard urban, you knew it was streetwear, right? And so, like... I felt like that was the start of something great, like just coming up with that unique name and just like branching off from there. So I enjoy that part. Fast forward a little bit and we did the truck. Mm, the truck. The truck? The truck was a whole nother stressful process, but I knew and I trusted your vision. Because I was like, oh, this, and at this time, like, mobile trucks was like, a what? You want to do what? Like, people wasn't seeing the vision. And when you told me, you were showing me pictures, I was like, oh, this might actually, like, this might actually hit. Like, let's try it. And I remember you, you was searching for a long time, like, for that perfect truck. And I remember I was like, why don't you just get, like, let's just go to the auction. Like, they got those trucks all day. And he was like, no, this a particular truck. And I'm like, what's particular about it? Like, I'm just trying to hurry up and get this process going. And, but you being the person that you are, being very detailed and very, like, like, you know, like, just being the artist that you are, he was like, nah. I don't care how long I got to wait, but I'm going to find that perfect truck. And so long story short, we ended up driving like an hour. Well, first he was harassing this guy (laughs) that owned the truck. And he was like, look, like, I'm serious. I want the truck. I got cash money in my pocket right now. So, so I'm just sitting back. I'm just sitting back, like looking at this whole, like, how this going to play out? The man don't want to sell the truck. You really want this truck. And so we pull up, we drive an hour, we pull up, he looked at it, he did a full inspection. At the time, we got seven. She in her pajamas. I know this white man is probably like, what the hell? What are they going to do with this truck? And um, yeah, that was a fun process. Um, Picking up the truck, putting it on the flatbed. And it was headed, it was headed home, and we was, had, the next step was gutting it out, um, but the, the truck error, um, how it all started was definitely an interesting, um, 
another interesting journey that I was like, let's see, I'm down. And I'm glad we made that decision. So what was your initial reaction when you first found out Stephanie was on her way? On her way where? Oh, like she was in my tummy? Like, like, oh, this is real? Like, oh, I got a real baby in me? Um, it was a little, like anything else, it, it, it was, it was nervous, nervous, it was nervousness, it was a little bit of every emotion you could think of, and although, like, she wasn't planned, we were excited because now we were adding a whole nother addition to the family like we had I feel like Urban Trademark was our baby that was like the first baby right when we have a fish tank we had a fish tank I got a picture downstairs right now of the fish tank I cut everything for you remember I put my hat in there no the fish tank that's pretty bad I don't remember the fish tank with the (laughs) fish on bottom the Patron bottle? Yes, I had a hat in there. I had the Breeze hat in there. I put the Patron bottle there. It was right by the door. Oh, dang. When we had seven, the first month, what was your thoughts? Like, as a mother and having this new responsibility, what were you thinking? What was I thinking? Um, A little bit of everything. Like, you know, reality started to set in and... um. Like, I had to turn it up a notch. Like, as far as being an adult, I had to turn that up a notch. As far as being a responsible parent, I had to turn that up a notch. I had to further my knowledge on, you know, how to be a good parent and what um, and what things I should be doing to be a good parent. So, it was just a lot. It was a lot all crammed in at once. And... It, I'm not going to lie, maybe a little bit of postpartum started to set in, but I'm thankful that I had you. I had a partner that, you know, wanted to take on the responsibilities just as much as I wanted to, and I feel like that helped take a load off. Um, Because I remember, remember, I was like, I just need some time. Like, I just need a little bit of time to myself, and I think that's all healthy for everybody. I can see that being super hard for a single mother or a single parent in general because it really does take a village to raise a child and I firmly believe that and see that and I'm just thankful for my village and that first month that first month was a lot I was just telling seven the other day like you used to get up in the middle of the night and cry we had to change your diaper. We had to feed you. We had to burp you. And not only that, I like my sleep. I like to sleep. I like to do all that. But when you came about, it wasn't about me anymore. It was about my child, about my family, and just keeping it going. So that first month, it was a little hard, not going to lie, but... We figured it out. We figured it out. We kept it going. And we still rolling. So then what's been the most rewarding thing thus far? Because I feel like, you know, just having seven and having a child, what's been the most thing that you do to wake up and come and be like? The most rewarding? The most rewarding is just seeing your child grow every single freaking day, every minute, every second. You literally watch your child grow in front of you and that part is so rewarding and in addition to that um in addition to that just knowing that for a long time like I would tell myself like I really have a child like I would tell myself I really have a child bro and like every day is just something new with a kid and it's a journey it's a it's a continuous journey. Like the journey is still going. So it's like the biggest change you've seen in yourself. 
The biggest change I'm noticing about myself right now is that I'm guarding my energy more. I'm guarding peace more. And I'm doing what I want to do, what feels good to me. Um, I'm usually the one to accommodate, you know, people's feelings and, you know, drop what I'm doing for people. And sometimes I feel like that energy is not reciprocated. Um, I feel like sometimes, um, it's just not an equal, it just doesn't feel like an equal relationship. And with that in mind, I could be putting that energy into my family. So I'm starting to notice that um, I'm just, I feel like right now where, I, where I'm at in life, I'm just um, learning myself more. And when you learn yourself more, you know how to move. You know the things you should be doing, the things you shouldn't be doing, you know, and yeah, I'm just learning a lot of things about myself and I hope I continue to learn more things that will help me excel and help me um, just give me self, you know, empowerment. I want to be a better version of myself every single day. So with that in mind, I need to listen more. With that in mind, I need to further my knowledge more, you know, put more time into me my family, my work, my craft, and things that I like to do. And right now, that's what I'm doing, and I'm enjoying it. So, yeah, that's what I'm learning about myself. What are the biggest challenges you have to The biggest challenge? The biggest challenge about having a kid is making sure that you give them enough of your time. Um, Sometimes when I'm working, I have a million things to do. You know, sometimes I'll feel guilty because seven will say, mom, you work too much. Mom, you're always working. And in in my eyes, that's kind of like, dang, am I working too much? Can I be spending more time with her? So I think that's the biggest struggle is because um, you just want to make sure you always give your child that time they're looking for. And, you know, you always want to be with your kids. So but at the same time, the bills got to get paid. Things got to get done. So just balancing um, everything and making sure, you know, your kid is taken care of and feels loved and appreciate it I think the dopest thing about um, that question and just you know being blessed to to be able to bless to be in a position to do it is that you know I think seven gets to see you work from home and I think you know that's a great thing because I think it's got to be a balance when it comes to kids as far as like you said like you want to give your kids time that's definitely I think it's dope for your kid to be able to see your grind because earlier you had stated like you started late in life for responsibilities. Yeah. And that's because a lot of stuff that was given to you. And so Posey Seven, for example, she's five years old and she's already doing it at least six, seven. Yeah. At the age of five. And we, I just feel like, you know, the times we're living in right now, we, we all know like things are going to be a lot harder for your generation. So I think her being advanced and doing certain things, not saying that she has to be a full-on adult, but this exposure, I think exposure is so keen with kids because the more they see and the more they do, the more uh, when those times do come. It's not a shell shock. They not, they, they kind of like, oh, I remember my mom used to. Because you said that. Remember mm-hmm. you said you, sell, you went to sell at your mom's store? Yeah. And you never forgot that. And even though you probably wasn't all the way in depth, like your mom was, mm. it was the fact that you saw it. You saw your mom do that. So you kind of had a little bit of like knowing. Mm. And that goes back to that exposure. So I think it's a blessing that, you know, Seven gets to see you work from home and you can explain certain things to her 
when it's working because in the long term, when she gets older, even though you feel like you want to be physically, like, clean, her just seeing you in your element and then you, you know, taking the time out of you, 15, 20, whatever you do, and you give her that time and then you go back, she's seeing you grind, which is one, she knows she's going to have to do when she gets older. And two, she knows that mommy's doing it with a, for, for a cause. It's for you at the end of the day. Like, when you want new clothes, new this, new that, we got to work to provide for you. So, and you're going to have that same responsibility when you get older. See, right now, you just, it's, it's up. Like, you, you, you know what I'm saying? But when you get a certain age, this same thing we talking about, it's, it's going to be, it's going to be your time to leave. Um, so right now, like, I'm working on a lot of things. Um, in addition to my full-time job, I'm trying to get more into the content creation space, the user-generated space, um, because we've been creating content for years, so now it's time to get paid for it. And now it's time to, you know, take it to the next level. So I've been working on that. Um, in addition to that, um, I, I still like to dibble and dabble in the music when I can. <laughs> I might catch me on a song or two. Um, and just being a mom, being a wife, those are jobs itself. And um, what else I'm working on? Yeah, that's it. <laughs>